Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2022 OACAO Active Living Fair with the Bowman Bell Older Adults. My name is Julieta. And behind the screen today, we have Kristen and Lauren that have worked very hard to organize this event. We also have Veronica um, and Stella. Stella is right here with me. <laughs> And they're gonna be behind the scenes to manage everything that is about Zoom. Just a few housekeeping items. To help today run smoothly, we ask you to keep yourself muted, muted during the presentation, just to ensure the sound quality for all the participants. Second, we ask that you save all the questions for the presentation to, um, to the end of the, of the feature. Um, and they will there will be time to answer. Uh, this will keep things uh, running smoothly and ensure um, we fit in all the wonderful presenters in the time allowed. We are going to begin today with uh, the land acknowledgement that will be read by Lauren. Good morning, everyone. The Bowmanville Older Adults Association is situated within the traditional and treaty territory of the Mississaugas and Chippewa of the Anishinaabe, known today as the William Treaty First Nation. Our work on these land acknowledges their resilience and their longstanding contributions to the area now known as the municipality of Clarington. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, we will now begin our presentation with a video from uh, Major Adrian Foster. Hi folks, I'm Adrian Foster and I'm the mayor of the municipality of Clarington and I am here to congratulate the BOAA on their first active living health fair. It's a virtual one. We are getting back to a time when we're all going to be joining together. But in the meantime, here's an opportunity to see some faces that you maybe haven't seen, to do something different in the day and to get ready to come back in person for these. So congratulations on the event. I hope you all enjoy it deeply and I will look forward to being able to see you face to face really soon. Thank you to our mayor, Adrian Foster. Uh, next, we will be hearing from Terry Lynn. She is from the Alzheimer's Society of Durham Region, and she will be sharing with us a little bit about the services that they offer. Let me start by saying thank you so much to the Bowmanville Older Adults Association for allowing me to be part of this and talk a little bit about this program that we're talking about today, which is the Minds in Motion program. So we have several different programs that we run obviously at the Alzheimer's Society, but this is the one that we really wanted to highlight for you guys today. Um, and so let's just talk a little bit about Minds in Motion, yeah. So this is Sarah, our fearless leader. <laughs> Minds in Motion is one of our core social recreation programs. Minds in Motion is one of our core social recreation programs, and it's a program that's offered at Alzheimer's societies across Canada. Prior to the pandemic, uh, we were running it in person at several different locations across Durham, and we were able to quickly adapt to offer it online, and it's translated very well. Minds in Motion is a physical and mental social stimulation program for people living with dementia and their care partners. The exercise portion combined with the social aspect is really beneficial for keeping the body and the mind active. Our consistent attendance at our virtual sessions, I think, speaks to the impact and the necessity of this program. Perfect. So what exactly is Minds in Motion? Well, it's a two hour program, depending upon the, the variety, like the format that it's being run at, uh, that combines fitness and recreation socialization. So for, it's designed specifically for the person living with dementia and their care partner. Um, there are certain extenuating circumstances where one may attend without the other, but ideally it is designed to, uh, for both um, members of the team. 
Um, activities have been created to minimize the risk and are tailored to the needs of older adults with cognitive challenges so that we don't want you coming in and being concerned that you may not be able to follow along with each step or anything like that. It's, it's tar targeted specifically for everybody's levels. Staff and volunteers who run the program are trained and the registration process identifies any modifications that can be made for the participant. So the example that we've got here is sitting instead of standing for some of the exercises. Other examples of modifications, maybe potentially if you're having trouble um, with hearing, we might have you know, music playing that doesn't have lyrics, for example, so it's easier to follow along uh, with the instruction, that kind of modification. So we can recognize those during the, the um, registration process and make sure that they're adapted in the program that you're attending. So why minds in motion? Combining physical, mental, and social stimulation can decrease the risk of developing Alzheimer's and may slow the disease's progression from the Ontario Brain Institute in 2013. I think that speaks directly to our program. We've got this great combination of physical, mental, and social um, stimulation that's being run in this program together. Minds in Motion prom promotes an inclusive and dementia-friendly space for individuals to come and share, uh, come to participate in, uh, and in shared environment that is fun, stimulating, and beneficial to your health. Uh, so yeah, it, it just is an, a really welcoming place for everybody. Um, we've got people who have been attending and to continue to attend. So uh, the, there are different formats that we attended. The traditional format, like Sarah was saying in that beginning video, was in person. That's how we always ran it before the pandemic. And it is offered in a number of different locations around Durham region. So at the Ability Center, that's starting very soon in April. And at our home office here at the Alzheimer's Society, also in Whitby, that is also starting in April. But we have other ones that are coming up at the Bowmanville Older Adults Association in May and then at Douglas Crossing Retirement Home in Uxbridge starting in June. So those are the ones that you would actually be physically in person. Uh, but we, the other option that we've started to do since uh, COVID was a thing because it's uh, that's what's got us all online um, is offering it online. So it has a slightly different format when we run it online, but it's very similar in the structure of the program. Um, and it is going to be continued to be offered at least for the next year for sure. Um, every Wednesday afternoon, you do need to register for the program, but it's part of a Public Health Agency of Canada grant. And so it is going to be running for the next year. So how do you, how do you attend? Minds in Motion in person is, is like I said, slightly different format. Um, so registration is required when you register. Uh, there is a fee of $40 per person or $80 per couple. Like I said, ideally, this program is targeted to have, you know, both the, the person living with dementia and the care partner working um, together at the program. They are eight-week sessions, so once a week for eight weeks. For example, the one running at Ability Center is on Tuesdays. The one running at our home office is on Mondays, that kind of idea. And it will be every week um, at the same time and same place. And the, uh, so the in-person one is two hours. So it's the first hour is the fitness half. And then the second hour is when we're doing more of that social uh, recreation piece. So we're gonna have lots of interesting discussions and, and, and do activities together that way. When we go to the online version, there is still a registration required. There is no fee to attend because you are attending in your own home. Um, so you are, attend, you are signing up for eight week sessions. Um, and it is still once a week at the same time every day, uh, or each week, I mean, um, but the sessions are only an hour and a half. So you're there's still a half, half component of fitness and social recreation, but it's 45 minutes of fitness and 45 minutes of social recreation, as opposed to that hour of each. The other piece to this one, because it is part of this um, Public Health Agency of Canada grant, there is an, a, a research piece that's going along, along with it. And so that requires everybody who participates to be part of this uh, evaluation process where you'd be speaking with one of the members of the research team at the beginning of the, of the program and at the end of the eight week session so that um, we can sort of gauge how things are gonna be going, that kind of idea. So how do you register? There's a couple of different ways. Uh, if you're interested in joining this program, visit our website and sign up to receive our monthly newsletter or look at the quarterly program guide. You can contact me directly. Um, my information here is on the, the web page here, um, which shows that like, it's, it's my number. You can reach me through the, the main office and my extension is 5256, or I'm always available via email. I'm one of those people that's quite attached to my <laughs> email, I'm always answering. 
Um, so you can at tllennox at alzheimersdurham.com and I can get you registered that way myself. Or you can contact the site that is hosting the event. So like I said, at the Ability Center, at the Bowmanville Adult, Adult Center or Douglas Crossing um, and, and they can get us in contact and uh, get you registered that way. So of course, I always wanna tell you what else is coming up. We have our Walk for Alzheimer's uh, coming up in May, May 28th um, um, on Saturday at Hayden Shores in Whitby. And we're looking for you know, a way to try to help to, to alleviate some of the, the, the issues that go along with Alzheimer's, um, struggles that happen with that. And we're looking to sort of make it a little bit easier for everybody in one way or another. So that's our big fundraiser event. So well, thank you very much for listening. I saw one message come up about Peterborough. We don't have one in Peterborough uh, currently. They they have their own because it's a different um, society there, um, but they do run a virtual one as well. I know for a fact of that one because I've been in contact with them. They probably have their own, but they're not in Durham region. Does anybody else have any questions for me? I know I talk fast, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> Try to slow down. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, Jerry, uh, how do they? How can they register? If you can maybe uh, repeat that. So yeah, you can you can look onto the web like our website or con look at look at our guide. You can contact me directly, um, or you can talk to the host site. So if it's at the Bowmanville Older Adult Center, you can uh, talk to them directly, and we can get you in con get in contact that way, um, or or one of our head office kind of idea. Perfect. Can I compliment here a little bit? Yes, So, we, hello, Veronica from, from the Bowman Builder Adult Program Coordinator. So you can register to this program the same as you do always. And once you register, you're gonna receive a package from the Alzheimer Society to fill up forms, park your forms, waivers, all, all the information that they need to know to run the program. And then, uh, and then we will get in contact with you and, and share the information. And so everything is pretty much uh, as the way you register for our regular program here at the BOA. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Thank you very much, Terry. Um, if anybody else has another question, maybe. I have, I ha sorry, I have feedback. It's an amazing program. <laughs> uh, it is uh, social and yeah. uh, 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 you can see the connection that the members and the, that the participants get through all this program, through the physical and the social activities. And Absolutely. it is amazing for the caregiver. Yeah, I think it's really good for both members. I've actually, like I said, I've seen a real difference in both members of the of the the team, the the person living with dementia, as well as the care partner. Um, and and yes, it's a, such a great program that you find people join and they continue. We have some people that have been attending for five years and they don't miss a week. So that speaks a lot to the program itself and how well it's run. So thank you very much again to Terry Lynn. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And next, we are going to have Erin Erin Kemp uh, from Lakeshore Travel, and she's going to share about the upcoming international and domestic trips um, that they they have. We we're just running a little bit early this morning, so we're just going to have to wait a couple minutes for Erin to join us. Oh, here she is, and she's here, I believe. Sorry, I talk too fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Anybody needs more information about the Minds in Motion program? It is fun. Yeah, I agree. It's a very fun program. We have a lot of very interesting different topics that we we, we cross. Um, so you're not just getting that physical, but you're also getting that sort of learning experience and social time. So yeah, it can be a really good program. And we listen to the members of the, the program too. So if you guys have suggestions as to, you know, I'd really like to learn about 
you know, something we can kind of run programs that are, are targeted that way as well. So I'm, I'm going to open my big mouth here. They <laughs> also have a, well, before pandemic, they used to have the Brain Waves Cafe. So it was a social gather every, every Tuesday was used to be here at the center. Uh-huh. And it was only the social component. So maybe, uh, and I'm just going to open here the question, Terry, is there something that you are looking into forward? Yeah, we, we're, we're looking at getting the Brainwaves Cafe back up and running as well. Um, it just hasn't happened as of yet. We're still trying to get all the pieces together. Okay. Minds in Motion was our priority to get up and running first because you are getting so much more benefit with having both the physical and the mental stimulation at the same time. Um, but ideally, yes, we will get back to a Brainwaves Cafe. We're also looking to get the walking buddies up and running soon as well, which is just that physical component kind of idea as well. Right. So pro- things are slowly it's coming back little. to some sort of some, some, some semblance of normal, but uh, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> For sure. For Thank sure. you very much again, Terry. No and, problem. Um, now we have um, Erin Kemp from Lakeshore Travel. Hello, hi. I know um, my Zoom name says Eric Forster, but it's Aaron here from uh, Kemp Travel and Lakeshore Tours and Travel. So thank you guys all for joining me. I'm excited to be here and see some familiar faces. I know it's it's been some time since I've seen everyone in person, but luckily I've been able to connect with a few of you uh, throughout the pandemic um, via Zoom. So that's been very nice. Um, we are very excited that we are finally back out on the road. So today I'm going to share some details about our, our Lakeshore tours um, and what we have in store coming up and what is available to everyone and give a little bit of background on what Lakeshore Tours and Travel is for those of you who don't know. So again, thank you. I'm Erin Kemp and I am going to give you a quick run through of what um, we have in store here. So, whoops, if I can. Okay, so as I mentioned, I am Erin Kemp, Lakeshore Tours and Travel. We do have our um, office downtown Bowmanville. So those who are familiar with us, we used to be in the Bowmanville Mall. And then we moved across the street to the plaza that was um, that's across the street. And then we've now, since COVID, we've moved uptown. So we are uh, sharing a location with our Kemp Travel office. Uh, so we are uptown um, between Pita Pit and the Gift Hunter. So right across from the municipal lot on King Street. Um, so today's agenda, I'm going to give you a little bit of a highlight of what I've done in the past um, you know, few months as I know everyone is always a little bit curious as to what's going on, what travel looks like. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a a bird's eye view into that. We'll go through some of our Lakeshore tours, what we've got um, on the books, what we do, where we pick up, um, what tours we've got coming up. I'm gonna go over why it's important to travel in Canada this year and uh, what we have on the books for for travel in Canada. I'm gonna highlight some of our popular day tours that we've got, theater, shows, um, concerts, we've got our sightseeing tour. So we're gonna go through some of that. And then I'm gonna give you some time to open up if we have any questions or concerns in regards to um, our tours. So in February, I actually was very fortunate enough to travel down to Antarctica. So a uh, part of the world, a lot of people hear about, but don't know a whole lot about. So uh, myself included, I was extremely excited to be able to get the opportunity to travel down to Antarctica Um, It was a two week trip um, via Buenos Aires. So we traveled through um, Buenos Aires down to the tip of the world, what they call the end of the world is Ushuaia uh, to board a, uh, uh, it is a ice class breaking ship. Um, So we boarded the ship, crossed the Drake Passage, which I know some people think is absolutely terrifying. We were very lucky and had some very calm weather, um, what they call very calm weather three to four meter swells. So still some swells out there, but uh, the ship has been designed to keep a, uh, a stable level um, and really was not too bad at all. So we got to um, enjoy six and a half days down in Antarctica doing uh, Zodiac cruising. You can see here, we did some kayaking. These are all photos that um, are from our trip. So some fantastic up close and personal um, experiences. So we did, like I said, kayaking, you get to do um, zodiac cruising, the humpback whales that you can see up there in the photo, they are, they're 
they're fantastic. You get quite close, which is very exciting. Um, of course, tons of penguins and the opportunity to actually walk on the seventh continent. So that was a very cool experience. Uh, you can see here on the list, uh, you can also take the opportunity to do a polar plunge. So they open up the back marina of the ship. They allow you to jump off into the sub Antarctic uh, waters, uh, icebergs floating all around you. It was, um, it's an experience, and if you're brave enough, it's it's worth it. You know, to say that you've jumped in the ocean down in Antarctica is a pretty cool thing to be able to say. So, um, if you're brave, I, I suggest doing it. Should you ever get the opportunity, but definitely wakes you up, if nothing else. So that's a quick sum up of um, our experience in Antarctica, and then. I personally wasn't on this one, but Eric um, got our first tour out. So our first tour out on the road was to Whitehorse. So explore um, the Northern frontier. Uh, so we did dog sledding. It was, uh, the main reason was to go up for the Aurora Borealis and very successful. You can see there are some photos um, from our experience. The Aurora was beautiful. Get out into, um, you know, like I said, the last frontier, uh, do some gold panning, dog sledding, snowmobiling, uh, the Yukon Wildlife Preserve, the city tour experience, really what Northern living is in the winter. Um, you know, there's, there's people, we will be doing it again for 2023 because there are some people that, you know, really wish they had gone up there and never got the opportunity to. So it is something, um, it's another thing that you can check off that bucket list, a really very cool traditionally Canadian experience up in the North. So moving on to what we've got coming up. For those of you who don't know, we do have a sister company that operates out of Lindsay, Peterborough, and Omimi. So that is Cardinal Coach Tours. Very similar product, um, very similar offerings. However, um, some differences because of the demographic and because of the geolo uh, geographical location. Um, so you will see some different day tours between the two companies. However, most of our overnights and international and longer Canadian tours are shared. So you will um, meet some guests from the Peterborough Lindsay area um, that are on our Cardinal side. And then um, we do combine with the Lakeshore tours as well. So what we do, for those of you who don't know, we are a worry-free bus tour company. Um, we have our day tours, our multi-day tours within Canada and the States, and then we have our international trips um, to all reaches of the world. Um, currently, we have Europe, South America, we have US, we have Iceland, we've got all kinds of options for um, you know, everyone's different tastes. Um, we are also a full-service travel consultant. So we can help with individual trips, we can do custom travel, we have travel insurance, flights, car rentals, whatever it is that you're looking for, we are here to help. We have agents that are specific in each of those areas, so there's always someone around to help you. So as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, those are our coaches that we use. So we partner with Foley Bus Lines, and we have our own coaches for Lakeshore Tours and Travel and Cardinal Coach Tours. So um, if you've been on one of our coaches, they look very similar to the other coaches, and they are um, they are very comfortable coaches with a little bit of extra leg room, nice seats. They've got the TVs so we can play movies on the longer road trips. Um, there's a washroom available should uh, you need to use it. So they are comfortable coaches for everyone. So just to give over some of our pickup locations, as I mentioned, the Lakeshore Tours and Travel picks up along the lakeshore. So we start in uh, Coburg, Port Hope, Bowmanville, Oshawa, and Whitby. And then in the Cardinal Coach Tour Stars, we do Peterborough, Omimi, Lindsay, Port Perry, and Whitby. So there are some crossover there you will see, but those are our pickup locations for, um, you know, if you have friends outside of the Bowmanville area, they can join you on the same tour and pick up closer to home um, in most circumstances. So why travel within Canada for 2022? Um, there's always been plenty of reasons. Our backyard is absolutely stunning. There is so much to see within Canada. And right now with COVID restrictions, you know, everyone has a different comfort level. It is of course much easier to travel within Canada. So this is the perfect time to take that opportunity. If you're not quite comfortable going outside of the borders, then look at what's in Canada. It doesn't have to be a trip up to the um, to the Arctic or up to the Yukon it doesn't have to be out west we've got lots of tours um, that are that leave right from here with no flights included so jump on the coach in Bowmanville and you are on your way like I said it is worry free so we do have a tour director on all of our tours um, 
one of the big reasons we're looking to support Canada is it's been very tough for the tourism industry in Canada because we have been so closed from uh, the rest of the world for so long. So we're looking to support our local businesses, get our local tourism economy back up and running after being shut down for such a long period of time. I know when we went up to the Yukon, they've been very closed off for such a long time. They were so thankful to have us up there exploring the Yukon and, you know, making the journey up there to explore our country instead of going elsewhere. So you know, there is lots to see. And as I said, the, our, our country, a lot of us, we take it for granted. We don't, we don't explore as much as we, you know, we think we should. Um, so we do have a lot on the books for it um, in Canada. So as I mentioned, we do day trips as well. So we've got theater, we've got sports, shopping, sightseeing, casinos, concerts. There's pretty much a day tour for everyone out there. We will be bringing back our um, one day um, Blue Jays trips. Um, we've got lots of theater on the books already, which I'll go through. So some of our popular, one of the big ones is uh, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So that is coming out. Um, we'll be at Mervish. So we do have nine dates for that um, all the way into 2023. So if you're not quite ready to get out to the theater yet, then there's lots of time to be able to do so. We've got lots of options at the Shaw Festival, Stratford Festival, and uh, the Herringate Barn Theater. So anyone who's familiar with the Herringate Barn Theater, they do a great job there. And we do have quite a lineup um, coming for uh, the rest of the year. We also have some concerts. So anyone um, that is into music and likes a smaller setting, Bigaman's Showplace Theater in Kitchener is fantastic. They've got tribute to ABBA coming up. They've got a tribute to Neil Diamond. We've got uh, the Sanderson Center in Brantford with uh, Walter's Family Christmas that always sells out for us. It is such a fun event. Um, and then we do have our uh, West Bend Theater as well. So they're just getting back up and running. So we should see some more for West Bend as well. Um, that one's a little bit closer to home in Campbellford. Shopping, everyone loves to get out shopping. Um, we do have our outlets of Niagara. We have our St. Jacob's Market. We do have now back on the books because you do not need to test as of April 1st to go into the States or come back. So we have our Watertown and Buffalo shopping trips back on the books as well uh, to get you out there. Um, I know some people have been dying to get across the border. So this gives you the opportunity to hop on the coach. No testing requirements. Um, to go down or come back, just proof of vaccination on that one. Our sightseeing tours, there's always lots of them. Just want to highlight a few of them. We've got the Hamilton um, House and Garden Tour. So going to see um, some of the famous gardens and homes in the Hamilton area. We have lots of festivals coming up. So as those festivals get announced, um, as we hope to see some of them here in Bowmanville, a lot of the smaller towns are bringing them back as well. So we've got the Midland Butter Tart Festival. We've got um, Maple and Cheese and Chocolate in Perth. We'll see um, some um, for the tulips coming back. Um, lots of uh, day cruises. So up in Georgian Bay, Perry Sound, out to the Thousand Islands. A new one we're trying this year is the Thousand Islands helicopter tour. So you actually get the opportunity to get up in a helicopter. It's about a 10 to 15 minute flight per person um, and actually fly over the Thousand Islands. So that's paired with a, um, a cidery tour. So uh, lunch, a cider flight, and a real flight up in a helicopter. So very cool opportunity. Um, if you've never been in a helicopter, something to think about. Our multi-day trips. So if you're looking for something a little bit longer, looking to get out of town and go on a, a little staycation, then we have lots of options for you. So on the uh, left-hand side of the screen, you'll see Agua Canyon, which is our very popular fall colors tour. Um, one a little bit further from home is our Haida Gwaii. So Haida Gwaii, some people say, what is Haida Gwaii? It is formerly known as the Queen Charlotte Islands. So it is north of Vancouver Island out on the West Coast. Um, it is a absolutely stunning part of the world. It is a very heavy, um, it's a very indigenous community. So they have been closed for the last two years. This summer, they will start accepting tourists back. So we are very excited to get out there. Um, it includes round trip airfare from Pearson. Of course, your pickups in your selected pickup location. So by the time you get on the coach to the time you get dropped back off, you are taken care of from start to finish. It includes all your accommodations, all the touring. So some of the key things that we're going to be doing is grizzly bear sightseeing. We are going to be doing indigenous culture and history. We'll be seeing some of the totems that are still out on the, um, out on the islands. Um, we'll be doing some ferry crossings, the museum, lots of sightseeing to see um, wildlife. So out in the zodiacs, we'll be out in the zodiacs exploring some of the smaller islands. 
um, and some of the provincial parks and um, yeah, experiencing all that Haida Gwaii or the Queen Charlotte Islands have to offer. Newfoundland and Labrador is an extremely popular one. I know we have some folks from the BOA who are already booked this year. I think our July has only two spots left on it. June does have some more um, availability on it. However, um, this one is always popular. Uh, it is such a fantastic part of the world. We get, And the nice thing is we get to do Newfoundland and Labrador. If the weather cooperates, of course, we have to take a ferry. And if the, um, the ferry crossing is not... Um, going to be safe or the ferries are not running, then we will do our best to get out there. But there has been some circumstances where we don't get there, but the goal is always Labrador as well. Um, so 12 day bus tour. However, we do fly out to Deer Lake and back home from St. John's. So you're not making that long trip across the country out east. We'll save a, a shave off a few days by flying out there and then doing a coach tour of uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, so Grossmore National Park, which you can see on the top photo there, absolutely stunning. If you're traveling in June, uh, the chance to see icebergs are quite high. So hopefully you'll see some ice flows and some icebergs going by. Um, we have um, lots of um, tours and excursions included in that. Uh, you can get the opportunity to get screeched in. Um, whale and puffin boat tour. So if we are lucky, we will see uh, whales. Um, there's June, a little bit higher chance of seeing icebergs, July, a little bit higher chance of seeing whales. So there are some pros and cons to both times, but beautiful uh, nonetheless. Uh, puffins are pretty much guaranteed all the time. So you can, you can kind of bank on seeing those. Um, so as I said, Iceberg Alley will hit Twillingate. Um, we do some very cool uh, sightseeing on this one. And as you can see, the scenery up there is absolutely beautiful. Rocky Mountaineer. Um, when we say the Rocky Mountaineer, everyone kind of pictures, has an idea of what it looks like. Up on the top there, you'll see the Rocky Mountaineer. Um, misconception with the Rocky Mountaineer sometimes is that you sleep on the train. So very different than the Via. You will only travel on the Rocky Mountaineer during daylight hours. They will actually slow the train down should you see some, some wildlife. So if there is a bear, they will actually slow the train down as much as possible so that Everyone gets the opportunity to get to the window or get out to the outside viewing areas to get a glimpse of that bear. So a very cool opportunity there. Um, again, this one is going from Calgary to Vancouver. So you'll fly out to Calgary. You'll do um, some touring within the Calgary area up to Banff Lake Louise. Um, you'll get on the train. We have two full days on the train. Um, again, like I said, you are not sleeping on the train. So you'll be in hotels um, for for that um and then you'll fly home from vancouver so flights again to cut off some of that travel time instead of driving out west so we're going to be doing vancouver lookout the suspension bridge we'll see gross mountain sky ride out in vancouver then we will do the train and i got that mixed up we're flying out to vancouver and coming back from calgary um so we'll do banff as i mentioned yoho lake louise glacier skywalk banff gondola um, if you haven't been out to this area, it is it is beautiful. I'm heading out there at the end of the month. I'm very excited to get out, um, especially in the summer, the blue waters of Lake Louise and the mountains and um, the wildlife out there is pretty fantastic if you've never been. The Rocky Mountaineer is an attraction in itself with the spiral tunnels. It's not something everyone gets to take. Um, you know, you can't see these parts of the land um, or the country by car. Um, so even if you've done a road trip, it's not the same thing. You will see scenery that you've never seen before that you can only see from the train. So uh, still space on this one. This is for the summer, again, within Canada. So a great opportunity. Um, similar to Newfoundland and Labrador, we are going out to Atlantic Canada. This will be on the coach. So you'll depart from your selected pickup location and you will drive out to um, through Quebec, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia and PEI. Um, 11 nights on this one. Of course, you have your tour director with you. Um, we'll do guided tours of Montreal, Halifax, Cabot Trail, Charlottetown. Um, we'll hit the key highlights. So Peggy's Cove, Hopewell Rocks. We'll see the end of Green Gables Center, um, Confederation Bridge. Um, we'll do Cape Breton. Um, we'll do the ferry across the Northumberland Strait. Um, all kinds of things in the um, in these areas. So a really traditional East Coast tour, um, again, seeing some very beautiful parts of Canada. Some other popular ones that are a little closer to home, we have um, overnight casino tours, we have our Ottawa tulip time. So taking in the tulip festival in Ottawa, we have um, Niagara on the Lake overnight, very, um, very cool one. It's a about shopping, dining, discovering. There's a Shaw Festival show included. So a nice getaway um, in May there coming up, or sorry, in June coming up. We have um, our Northwest Territories. So that is a road trip 
um, up to the Yukon um, in the summer to experience it very different than the winter. Um, we're doing Gaspe Peninsula in Quebec, so exploring um, the Quebec Maritimes. Uh, Agua Canyon, as I mentioned, to take in the fall colors. Um, Quebec City via rail, so exploring Quebec City, taking the train. And then we do Quebec City Christmas markets, and the Christmas markets there are fantastic. It's almost like you're in a little European village. They do a very good job there. Um, again, we have some to uh, the US, so we've got New York City, we've got um, Cape Cod and Boston, we've got some casino tours, we're doing uh, Southwest National Parks, you'll visit the Grand Canyon, um, some shopping tours in there, we've got Frankenmuth, we've got Blue Christmas for Tennessee and Memphis. Um, another very special one, it says 2022 here, however, we have moved the Kentucky Derby to 2023, so another bucket list item, you'll get the opportunity to buy your fascinator or your cool hat uh, to wear to the Kentucky Derby, we've got tickets there for the show, it will, of course, the main focus is the Kentucky Derby, however, there's a lot of other things included. As I mentioned, this year we do have still a, a small handful of our international tours. Um, Oberammergau was rescheduled from 2020, moved over to 2022, so that is still scheduled um, to take in the Passion Play uh, in Germany. Um, we have our Iceland tour, so that's a tour in June exploring the land of fire and ice. We have our Rhine River cruise that will start in Amsterdam, do a seven night river cruise with Avalon waterways and then explore the Switzerland Lake districts. Um, and then we have Discover Peru. So someone looking for something a little bit more exotic, but you still have that comfort of home with your tour director. Um, don't think Peru is all hiking and all mountaineering. It is not. You can choose to hike as much as you'd like, or you can take the coach right to Machu Picchu. Uh, so of course you need to be able to walk around the Citadel and uh, city tours, but it is not by any means a marathon or um, heavily hiking focus. So uh, something to consider. It is, I've been three times now and I would go back in a heartbeat. It is fantastic. It is a very cool spot. Um, the site of Machu Picchu is incredible in itself, along with all the other things that you get to see. A couple long stays that we have. I know winter has been long for those of you who haven't been away for the past two years. Um, we have our Florida uh, long stay programs. You can go for one month, two months, or three months um, in the Bradenton area. Uh, so you have your own self-sustaining villa or condo. Um, there are two bedrooms, full kitchens, full living room, within a gated community with um, lots of amenities close to the ocean and lots of um, you know, shopping, restaurants, attractions in the area. We also do a few, um, normally about one excursion or outing per week on the coach. So if you want to go um, and join the group or you can do as little or as much with the group as you'd like. Another one we have for 2023 in March is a Portugal long stay. So this is a three week uh, stay in Portugal along the Algarve. Uh, staying at a beachfront, uh, Grand Muthu Ora. Uh, so again, it is um, a self-sustaining apartment. So you do have uh, the ability to go and get your groceries, um, but there are, um, sorry, someone has unmuted. I'm getting a lot of feedback. Is that me? There we go. Sorry. Um, okay. So Grand Muthu, yes, it does have the ability. So you do have a kitchenette in there. You can cook your meals in there if you'd like. And there are restaurants on site as well. Um, so again, tour director is there with you throughout. We do some excursions. It's within walking distance to the beach um, and lots of shopping and amenities within that area. So those are a few of the things we have on the books. I know that is a lot in a short period of time. Um, but I did want to open it up to provide any feedback and I, any questions that you may have. I do want to just touch base on the fact that we still are requiring vaccination to board the coach. So you will need to show proof of vaccination to book on one of our tours at this point. Um, we will require masks on the coach until further notice because we are back to full capacity. So we are in close quarters. We wanna protect our staff and our guests and our drivers. So um, when we get to the individual venues and facilities, we will follow their rules and regulations. However, if you'd like to wear a mask for it throughout, that is perfectly fine in your choice. We do um, require it on the coach because of close quarters. Um, so again, proof of vaccination for the time being because some venues require it, some venues don't. Um, with 300 or so tours on, on our schedule, it's very difficult to say, okay, this one doesn't, this one does. So for the time being, um, everyone will 
be required to show proof of vaccination before you board the coach. You will be required to wear a mask. We are still defogging. Um, every time the entire uh, group gets off the coach, the coach will be fogged. All high touch points will be sanitized. We have hand sanitizer wipes um, when you board the coach. So all of those things are there. Um, we will be doing a verbal screening just to make sure that everyone is feeling well. Um, we ask that if you are not feeling well, that you do not come. Um, we will work those situations out should, should that arise. Hopefully we are at past that point, but we always know we have contingency plans in place. Um, but yes, yeah, so those are some of our protocols moving forward. Um, we hope that you know we can provide a safe environment and we feel that by asking for masks on the coach and full vaccination, it does provide a fairly safe environment as much as possible to get out and enjoy, you know, our local area and and beyond. We are really excited to get back out on the road and to welcome you back on our coach and to help you explore our, our backyard, whether it be within Ontario, within the Durham region or beyond. And uh, hopefully you'll join us on some of our longer tours if that's something you're interested in, but I will, I will open it up um, if possible to see if anyone has any questions, comments, um, concerns. I will just stop that. And yeah, does anyone have any questions? Now I can see everyone's lovely faces. No questions? No question. Let's see what. Nothing on the chat, just feedback that they, some people have used the uh, the day trips and they're excellent. Well, thank you for that. We appreciate that. Um, you can visit any. Sorry, go ahead. No, sorry. Anybody oh. can unmute themselves and ask a question if they if they would like to ask a question. We do have the time. Carol. Carol. Yeah, there. I'm just interested in the Newfoundland trip. Yeah. Um. How would it be for somebody who has limited mobility? So we would note that on your file. Um, that tour, again, it does have some, some walking involved because of the sites that we visit. However, there's no long hikes. There's no super long walks. So if you have limited mobility, um, depends on your limitation. Of course, there are some areas that you will be walking on uneven ground, um, have to walk to and from the coach, and then around some of the sites. However, it is not overly strenuous. It is active, but it's not extremely active. And we say active because like I said, you need to be able to do some of the sightseeing, walking um, on and off the coach a few times um, and some uneven ground. However, there is a tour director there. So should there ever be a point where, you know, you say, this is as far as I can go, that's fine. They'll find you a location to say, okay, well, you can wait here and we'll pick you back up on the way back. Okay. Cause my husband has uh has limited mobility, but uh, we were interested in a Newfoundland trip. Yeah, so we can also take that conversation offline to kind of find out exactly what the okay. mobility is and what, um, where some of the issues may be. But it's for the most part, it's designed for um, not to be extremely active. It's designed to be a moderately active tour. Um, and we say active only because you have to be able to walk around. It's not like we're going on hikes or long five kilometer walks by any means. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Erin. Yes. Um, sorry. Um, could you just run the uh, dates for the Quebec City Christmas markets for 2022, December 1st to? Let me just grab that one again. Christmas markets is December 1st to the 4th fourth okay so at the beginning of december mm -hmm. we try and, and get close to when they open before it gets extremely cold in quebec mm -hmm. could, could i bring uh, a member of my family who's not a member of the boa oh of course so our tours are open to anyone outside you know within the boa or outside the boa they don't have to be um, a member of the boa we're we're more than happy to have anyone that wants to come yeah, thank you. Anyone else? I don't see. So thank you very much, Erin. Like everything looked fantastic. I really love those, the one that um, 
the one that goes to Lake Louise. The van. Oh, oh, it's oh. yeah. The Rocky Mountaineer is fantastic. It is such, I am, like I said, I'm going out there for, um, for, uh, a work trip, um, next Tuesday actually. And I, it's very different in the winter than it is the summer, but nonetheless, it is absolutely stunning out there. I, I have not done the Rocky Mountaineer myself, but, um, my parents have done it and I've had tons of clients and I've never heard bad reviews from it other than I didn't go long enough. Um, I need to go again. So <laughs> that's pretty good reviews if, in my books. Um, yeah, there's lots of beautiful spots out here, um, out in Canada, around the world, everywhere. It's, it becomes a, what do I do first? Because there's so many options out there. Um, yeah. So I just want to say thank you for everyone to coming out. Um, we do have our brochure online. However, if you want one mailed to you, um, you can always send us an email or give us a call. We will mail one out to you. We update them very frequently. Our website is always up to date where you have all of the details. However, we're in town. We can always drop off if there's a request for quite a few of them. We can drop them off at the BOAA so you can pick them up there. Um, it's just a short walk for me to get over there. Uh, so no problems. Um, I did put in everyone's, um, I believe most people should have the day tour at a glance flyer that does have the day tours on there. And then there is a list of some of the longer tours on there as well, which has all of our contact info. So you can check us out online or give us a shout and we can provide any of the details or flyers um, that you're looking for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Karen, you very much. For Sorry. Yeah. And just out of curiosity, um, what if you, I, I, um, you have a Rhine cruise going um, July. Yes. Um, do you have any cruises going like to Budapest or like at this time or what's the story? I guess the story depends on who you're talking to. Um, <laughs> we have lots of clients, um, my, myself included, are supposed to head over to that area of, in two weeks. Um, so as it stands right now, um, the situation is quite isolated within Ukraine and Russia. Um, most tour operators have pulled Russia out of all of their itineraries through till 2024 with the foreseeable future, not visiting because of the mm -hmm. circumstance. Um, I have colleagues who are in Budapest right now, zero interruption, um, to daily life. Um, a little bit more talk than what's going on here because it is close. However, no interruption to what's going on. Um, she has told me that if you're not looking for something, then you're not going to find it. So you really have to look to kind of see some, some reflection and some, some impact as to what's going on. There is more impact in Poland and the, the bordering cities there than there is in Budapest currently. Um, so we are keeping our ears to the ground. Our Rhine does not, is on the West coast or sorry. Yeah. On the West coast of Europe. So quite, quite removed in terms of relation to what is going on in Ukraine and Russia. We are continuing as is, however, our, like I said, our ears are to the ground as, as well as our partners on the ground to make sure that our, our client safety mm -hmm. is number one. If we have to make adjustments, we will. However, right now, even the sailings from um, Romania through to Hungary are going on as planned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Just thought I'd ask. Yeah, you know, there's if it's not COVID, there's something else going on, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah no kidding. <laughs> Got to keep us on Thank our you toes. Very much appreciate You're it. You're very welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Um, and like I said, my information is around. So if you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Perfect. Thank Enjoy you so much. Enjoy the rest Jane. of your day. Thank you. So hello back again. Um, and if, uh, just a reminder, if you haven't received your package for the OACAO uh, for the event today, there is a package waiting for you here at the front desk. Uh, you can just come and pick it up. You can also, if you want it um, sent to you or delivered, you can send us an email uh, to Don, and that's at boaa at bowmanbelolderados.com. So that's um, to request for your package to be delivered. So thank you again for uh, joining us. And for our next presenter, we have um, um, Sonia Stobbings, and she's from the Seasons Retirement Communities. Uh, she's gonna share, we're gonna share a video, uh, a little bit about the services that they provide.
Good morning, my name is Sonia Stubbings and I am the leasing manager for Seasons Clarington Retirement Community. Thank you for having me here today. Established in 2009, Seasons is a Canadian company that owns and operates senior retirement communities in Ontario and Alberta. Our management team has extensive experience in the senior housing sector and has developed a culture that is dedicated to providing residents with superior customer service. We want our residents to feel proud to call us home and know that they are surrounded by people who genuinely care. Our main customers are seniors who are looking to make a change for their better in their current living arrangements. This could stem from several factors, including access to healthy meals, social events, care services, or the peace of mind that comes from no longer having burdensome household chores and home maintenance to worry about. As you start your search for senior living options, you'll soon see that there are many different choices. At Seasons, we are here to help you understand what these choices mean. Retirement residences and long-term care as terms are often used interchangeably to describe a senior's home. The truth is, is that each option offers different types of services based on the amount of care a person needs. A retirement residence is typically an independent living community that offers housekeeping services, meals, activities, and care if needed. This should not be confused with long-term care. Long-term care residences cater to individuals who require the highest level of care, which might include 24-hour support. In Alberta, we work in partnership with Alberta Health Services to accommodate care needs up to a certain measure. In Ontario, long-term care homes are subsidized by the provincial government, while most retirement homes are not. Today's retirement residences are typically lively communities full of active, independent seniors who enjoy the convenience and support of communal living. While a heightened focus on health and safety has changed the day-to-day -day routines of our residents, our teams work hard to ensure our residents are engaged in meaningful activities and connected with their neighbors and loved ones. Our residents continue to enjoy the peace of mind that comes with knowing that they can count on our dedicated team members if and when they need us. We understand that our future residents still want to know professionally trained staff can provide care when needed, but this isn't their only priority. They also deserve a comfortable lifestyle in a safe yet welcoming environment surrounded by people who genuinely care. Season strives to accomplish this by being a place our residents are proud to call home. The townhouses and independent apartments at Seasons Retirement Communities offer independent living. They are designed for seniors who can live independently, but who wish to live in a community designated for seniors with access to social and recreational activities. Our one-story townhouses and apartments are equipped with an emergency call bell system, but no regular care services are provided. Independent supportive living suits an independent active senior who does not need assistance with activities of daily living, but who benefits from a supportive congregate living environment. Residents in independent supportive living receive assistance with scheduled care and typically enjoy services such as 24 hour emergency response, three meals a day, weekly housekeeping and medication administration. The assisted living program at Seasons provides supportive care to residents who need assistance with daily tasks, but do not require a skilled care provided at long-term care residents. Residents receive the same services as independent supportive living, plus any additional care services that assist with the activities of daily living, including unscheduled care. The memory care program at Seasons is specifically designed to care for seniors living with dementia or Alzheimer's disease in a dedicated secure area with some of our residences. Memory care community residences receive specialized assisted living care services. The Seasons Embrace Today memory care philosophy requires a deep understanding of who our residents are, so staff may adjust their interactions and respond with whatever is needed in the moment. Each of our trained service team members commits to approaching the workday with a promise to do his or her best to make all interactions positive and meaningful, one moment at a time. We believe that when we have a positive, authentic relationship among all care partners, it elevates person-centered care and makes it more meaningful. Upon move-in, new Seasons residents have their care requirements assessed by a medical professional and provided with a detailed report. They can expect to receive an updated assessment annually or as needs change. 
During this assessment, the resident and or substitute decision maker will be asked a series of questions about the resident's health, ability to perform activities of daily living and risk for falls. After the new resident will be recommended the appropriate bundled care package that best meets their requirements. This consultation helps us understand each resident's needs and desires and how we can support them as they age in place. All Seasons team members are trained to notice even the smallest changes in our residents, so we can have proactive and discreet conversations with them and in when we see their needs changing. There is no magic age or time to move into a retirement residence. Everyone is different and people have different wants and needs for their retirement. Many times people wait for a crisis like a health issue before they start to look at retirement living. While this is a natural response and we are prepared to help people with the decision at any stage of life, we encourage individuals to start thinking about seasons before an issue arises. When you are well, you have the luxury of time on your side. You can visit the different retirement residences in the area and weigh your options. At seasons, you are welcome to book a personalized appointment to view the home and potentially meet your new neighbors and service team members with whom you will be interacting each day. If you are still unsure whether to think about removing into a retirement residence, you might consider these questions. Are you eating three nutritious meals a day? Is it getting harder to keep up with the cleaning and maintaining of your home? Do you still drive? And if not, is it easy for you to arrange transportation? If you live alone, do you feel unsafe or lonely? When you start to consider retirement community living seriously, questions are bound to arise. Please visit our website for additional information at your leisure. Monthly fees vary by retirement community operator and its location. Seasons communities are predominantly in smaller centers versus major cities. Downsizing is necessary when seriously considering a move into a retirement community. What fits inside a three bedroom house simply cannot fit inside a one bedroom or two bedroom suite. The health and safety of our staff and residents remains our greatest priority. We continue to follow the advice of provincial and federal governments, our sector regulators and local public health agencies. For Seasons current COVID-19 protocols, please visit our website. For the latest news and updates of what is going on in our homes, please connect with us on social media too. Thank you for your time today. For more information, you can contact me at 905-697-9992 or drop into our home located at 65 Clarington Boulevard. Seasons is a proud supporter of the Bowmanville Older Adult Association. I look forward to seeing everybody in person again soon. Let's start the question and answer period. Thank you very much, Sonia. And if anybody has a question, you can unmute yourself, or maybe there is a question on the on the chat that Veronica would read. Hello, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great day on this windy, rainy day. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions, happy to answer them. Otherwise, I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the uh, session today. It's 905-697-9992. Sonia, if I could just make a comment. Uh, it's Alana Coles calling or oh, speaking. Hi, Alana. Hi, Sonia. Um, I just wanted to comment that both my mother-in-law and uh, our next door neighbor were in seasons. And one of the biggest things that they commented about was how much they appreciated how everyone knew their name. Uh, it's such an important thing um, for people to be called by their name. And that was, that was one of the things that they both commented on uh, right from almost day one, um, that didn't matter where they went, people called them by their name. And it was their first name, you know, which is important too. And the other thing that I, um, I'm very envious about as far as seasons goes is their the um, uh, lifeline because your lifeline at seasons works everywhere um, around your building in your rooms um, everywhere which is not the case in all the retirement homes um, and it's very important to know that they could be outside walking uh, around the building they could be anywhere in the building 
And if they needed that lifeline, it could be pushed and somebody be there right away. And that doesn't happen in all of the retirement homes. In some of the retirement homes, those lifelines work only in their people's room themselves. So I just wanted to mention that because I think that's really, really important. Thank you for sharing that, Elena. Yeah, we recently upgraded our system a couple of years ago to work everywhere um, with points of interest throughout the building and just outside as well. This is Carolyn. Do you have, uh, or at least, what uh, services do you have in the room, i.e. phone, television, Wi-Fi? Uh, so phone, television, and Wi-Fi are all included in our lifestyle package. So our phone is long distance everywhere, and the cable is the VIP package from Rogers. What about Wi-Fi? It's also included in the suites as well. It, yeah, in the rooms. It, in it, the rooms. Yeah. And do you have uh, two bedrooms? Like I heard you say something about uh, the, the suites. Do you have two bedroom units? Our largest unit is a 616 square foot one bedroom suite. Hmm. Perfect. Hopefully we'll be able to see each other soon in person again. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Sonia. Like we can still have a couple of minutes there for questions. If somebody has a question, one more. Right. You can also repeat the information. Do you have a website uh, for the seasons? We do. We have a website that lists um, all of our information. It also has access to our uh, seasons magazine that has lots of great information on uh, our company and our homes. Um, so feel free to access that. Uh, we keep updated on the website of all COVID-19 protocols and safety precautions that we're taking as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we are gonna be presenting um, our next uh, presentation is from Tanya Cochran. Uh, she is one of the computer and technology instructors here at the BOAM. Um, her presentation is going to be about passwords and fraud. She she's unable to attend today. Uh, we will pass along the questions, but we are going to have her presentation show. And once again, it's about passwords and fraud. Hi everyone, I'm Tanya Cochran and I am a computer instructor with the Bowmanville Older Adult Association. I'm thrilled to be here today. Unfortunately, I can't be here in person, but I'm so very glad to be a part of your virtual fair this afternoon. So as I mentioned, I'm a computer instructor with the BOAA and I've been doing online courses for the last little while during this pandemic. Uh, and before that, I worked in person at the center providing a variety of different classes on computers and technology and related content. So today, what the BOAA has asked me to do is talk a little bit about online safety, specifically on the topic of passwords. So I'm going to provide you with just a few tips to help you stay safe while on the internet. So my first tip for you is to always make sure that you're creating passwords for the different accounts and websites that you use that are unique and strong in nature. So what I mean by that is we want to make sure that we're using different passwords for our different accounts. It's very easy to fall into the trap of having one password for absolutely every account that we have. And why not? It would be nice and easy to remember. The problem with that is once that particular password becomes compromised, then we run the risk of someone accessing more of our accounts than uh, what they should be. In addition to that, it is a pain to have to change all of the different accounts if one of them is compromised. So what I do recommend is that you try to have a different 
password for every different type of account that you use online. In addition to that, we want to make sure that our password is nice and strong. So what do I mean by a strong password? Well, if we use something that's 1234 or A, B, C, D, E, then we run the risk of someone being able to guess that very quickly. Another one that we want to try to avoid is one that is um, just a password that is the word password. I know some people do that. Or perhaps their password is their pet's name. So those kinds of things are very easy to guess and very easy for someone to uh, access your account if they can figure it out. So we want to make sure that we have a minimum of about eight characters in our password. We want to use a combination of letters and numbers and perhaps even throwing in a symbol or two would also help. In addition to that, some of our letters should be capitalized and some should be lowercase. So that if you use all of those different techniques in your password, then that's going to be a really strong password. Once you've created passwords for your different accounts and websites that you use online, it's really important to write those down. If you're using a unique one for every account and every website, it's going to be very hard for you to remember what those passwords are. And so it's going to be a pain for you in the future if you ever have to type them in again to remember what they are. And if you can't remember what they are, it will be difficult for you to get through the process of resetting your password. So it's a good idea to have a safe little spot to put our passwords, write them down, perhaps a notebook or a piece of paper, it depends on how many you have, and put that somewhere safe in your home. Where you put that is going to depend on how many people from outside your home come in. If you have people uh, visiting you on a regular pace, uh, basis where you don't know them very well, uh, perhaps they're unsupervised in your home in different spots, then you might want to hide those passwords in a, a good spot. If you don't really have a lot of visitors, uh, you don't have people coming into your home that are strangers, then likely just a little notebook in a drawer uh, of your desk is, is probably okay. When you're writing down the password, do make sure to remember to write down what the password is for. So that will help you to remember what password goes with what account. This might go without saying, but it is important not to give out your passwords to just anybody. Of course, we have to make exceptions to that in some cases. If we have a family member helping us uh, get to the bottom of a problem with one of our accounts, if we're having trouble with something um, technology-wise, we may need to um, ask our son or daughter or a trusted friend to assist us, and we may need to give them our password to be able to provide that assistance. So we want to try to minimize that where, wherever possible. We don't want to give out our password to just anyone. And then once you're done uh, doing that, if you had to give it out, uh, I do recommend that you change your password and you change your password on a regular basis. So um, every six months, every year, depending on the type of account or website that you're using, you may want to change your password if there is a lot of sensitive information that um, you run the risk of losing if someone hacks into your account. It is important, as well as having passwords on websites and accounts, it is important to have passwords on our devices as well. So if we have a cell phone or a tablet that we leave the house with on a regular basis, it is a good idea to have a password protecting those, which means that if we leave it behind somewhere in a coffee shop, if someone steals your device, um, uh, or if you just misplace it, then if someone picks it up, they don't have full access to your phone or your tablet. The password will protect you from that person accessing any kind of personal information on there. So again, this is something that you should write down. Um, make sure that you have it somewhere safe because when it comes to the password on our cell phone or our tablet, if we forget it, the only solution to that is to do a factory reset on our device. What this does is it wipes our device, all the information, all our personal information, all our photos, 
um, all the progress on your solitaire games, all of that kind of goes away and it becomes, um, the memory is wiped clean and it becomes a device very similar to when you first purchased it right out of the box, ready to go again. So of course we don't want to do that if we can avoid it. So if you do put a password on your device, again, write this down somewhere safe where you can find it. So if you forget it, then you have access to it. One of the things that we talk about in the internet safety and security class that I teach is uh, what happens or how do we uh, be careful about emails or phone calls that we get from people we don't know asking us uh, for information or telling us that there's some kind of problem and that we have to enter in information in order to be able to solve it. So in this particular case, if we get an email that is asking for our account number, that's asking for our password, um, that's asking for our username for something, even if it is coming from where we think is possibly our bank maybe, or a service provider that we deal with, um, we wanna be very careful. Our service providers in our bank should not be accessing that information over email, um, or they should not be calling us and asking for that information over the phone. So that is our first red flag, and we wanna be careful and not give out that information. Often these emails or those, these phone calls have a sense of urgency to them. Somewhere in there uh, it will say, or the person will say, you know, it's very important that you act now, that your account is in jeopardy, um, you're uh, possibly going to be fined or have some kind of financial penalty. All of those things uh, are tactics to try to pressure you into making a split decision without thinking it through. So if you are faced with someone uh, contacting you by email or contacting you over the phone and asking for your username, your account number, your password, um, then just all you need to do is just stop. You can ask them for their name and phone number if you want to, but say you'd like to think about it and you will call them back hang up the phone, and if you're not quite sure, you have a couple of options. You can call a trusted friend and discuss it with them and see uh, what they think. You could also call the service provider or the bank and ask their advice as well. If it is actually them calling you and asking you for information, they'll be able to uh, give you some guidance. But in all likeliness, they will say that is a scam and they'll probably ask you for any kind of information you got from the phone call or the email to help them with their fraud investigation. So you always wanna make sure that you are not calling back the number that is given to you over the phone or given to you through the email. You wanna call the contact person and the contact number that you have in your files when you first opened the account with the particular bank or service provider. And this is an opportunity for you then to think it over, discuss it with the actual service provider or bank, and not run into any kind of rash decisions where someone could um, gain information that's going to uh, hurt you down the road. When we are on the internet and we're about to enter in our username and password into a particular website, or maybe we are doing some online shopping and we're going to put our credit card number into a website to purchase something, we always wanna make sure we're doing that on a secure website. So we wanna look at the very top of our computer screen of our browser and look at the um, the URL bar at the very top, and we're going to be looking for HTTP. That starts off the website address, and if we see HTTPS, as in SAM, then that just means that that website is secure. So we're looking for that S. If it doesn't appear there and all we see is HTTP, that means that website is not secure and we probably shouldn't be entering in any kind of personal or sensitive information. We often, in addition to that or instead of that, we often see a little lock symbol up on the top uh, URL bar 
Um, and that lock symbol also indicates that it's a secure website. What that means is it will then encrypt your information so that everything stays nice and safe when you send it to the um, business or organization. So those are all my tips for today on passwords and safety and security. Just a little snapshot of some of the stuff that we cover in my internet uh, safety and security class. We're together uh, for four hours, two hours each week for two weeks, and it's an opportunity for us to discuss uh, a variety of different safety techniques, um, ask questions, have um, uh, look at examples, have some discussion, and I hope that uh, you will consider joining me for that or another computer and technology class virtually with the BOAA in the future. I look forward to uh, speaking with you. I look forward to seeing you in class. Have a great day. Hi, everyone. I'm Thank you very much. Um, any questions that you might have, we're going to be recording them. And we are also going to be um, sending it to, to Tanya and we will send you answers um, or we will email answers uh, that Tanya provides. Um, so I believe uh, now we have... Uh... One second, Julieta. So if, if you anybody has any questions, um, you can voice them now and Veronica will record them um, so that we can provide them to uh, Tanya on later on today. Um, or you can just write them in the chat. And it's also a nice presentation because nowadays, like uh, so many emails uh, that are fishing for your information and all the time asking you, even I received one that said, uh, I want um, an iPhone. I mean, it's not real. <laughs> they want my information, of course. So if anybody has a question, you can unmute yourself. Um, Veronica is there as well. I don't have anything in the chat. You can type it as well if you want. Yeah. Like they say, always be uh, careful with links that are requiring to that tell you that uh, that is important that you provide your information because something of yours is um, has been compromised, like your credit card or your bank account, or even even your Amazon account. Like, yeah. Miss Myra, I think you wanna you have a question. Well, no, I just have a comment. Um, okay. Somebody else might have had this also. Um, I didn't, but Doug got Doug has now had two tech messages um, about the you know the sticker refunds that we're getting and it's just yeah your your refund of such and such an amount the amount being right you know just click this to receive it and it just looks you know it, it looks quite legitimate obviously we know no but somebody not thinking might think oh good my refund's here and click on that text link thank you maybe Mary. they won't but <laughs> yeah don't do it. Just go to Don't the do. Canada page of taxes. Yeah. <laughs> and also another another ones that are uh, very common is somebody that when the Revenue Canada calls you and say that you have to pay with uh, Bitcoin or you have to pay with Google cards or some other kind of uh, uh, PayPal as well or with some other kind of currency, right? Uh, is not real. They usually don't. And they will not send the police to your house, like as they make you believe. I did have the immigration call me and they say they have a, a case against me. <laughs> they say, we're going to send the police. I said, sure, send them. <laughs> as long as they're very handsome. Yeah, sure. We'll vouch for you, Julieta. <laughs> you know, another scam that I've had, I don't know, I, I don't know if I've heard of this, but it's happened to me is, uh, several times I'll get something uh, that says I'm getting a refund. And I actually got caught in that one time because it, it's a long story, but I was having difficulty with, well, I wasn't having difficulty, but I thought that I paid my cell phone bill twice. I hadn't, but I thought, because oh, I don't get a paper copy, I thought I'd done it. Well, sure enough, I get a, a notice from 
and I forget whether it was an email or a text, and it says your re refund for an overpayment on Bell uh, is has arrived. So I went through it, and it looks like you know the same thing of getting an e-transfer where it has all of the different banks, and uh, so that's another way uh, that they get you. But it, it, it just the reason that it got me at the time was that oh shoot, I must have really. Uh, paid that twice and so now I'm getting a refund but you know like after I thought about it like I, I know in the past I've done that like years ago I've done that before well of course they don't give you a refund it's just there for your next bill correct credit, a credit. correct I had somebody call me the other day and say that there's something wrong with your visa please press two so I pressed two just for fun and I said I don't even have a visa Oh my God. Click, she hung up right away. <laughs> yeah, nowadays everybody's trying to take advantage of, um, of everyone, right? And they're trying to make uh, quick, I guess, quick money without working. Um, I had a call in the middle of the night saying that my bank, uh, my bank card had been compromised. Well, you know, when you're fast asleep at three in the morning and I said, they said, we need to confirm and you're asleep and you're not thinking. And I said, well, my card is downstairs. She said, I'll wait while you get it so we can confirm and get this fixed. So by the time I hit the bottom step, I was, what the heck? I said, well, why don't you give me the number you have? And she said, I can't do that. I'm not allowed to. And I said, well, I'm not allowed to give you my number either. And, but it was just, you know, they catch you at a vulnerable time and it's easy to click or do or without thinking. That's right, yeah. All right. A lot of times when you get uh, email links, you'll notice I always look for the time it's sent because there's a time frame difference between India and where we are and there's six hours or 12 hours or whatever. And I'm always amazed that it's at 6 a.m. in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning. I'm like, oh my goodness, here we go again, delete you know, or what is it, block sender? That's what I do. Good. That's right. Another very common one would be like when somebody, somebody out of the blue sends you an email and they're asking you for a favor and they want you to, to send money or something, right? Sometimes those ones are, you have to like phone the actual person because in an email is very, very sketchy that it is most likely a hoax, right? Yeah. Um, all right. As well for selling, when you're selling something, um, they were putting them on television that people will pay you more. They will send you a check for more. And, and then they will ask you to send the money back through PayPal or send the money back through e-transfer. And then they, of course, the check doesn't clear and now you're out of money, right? So those are things to be careful. Um, so anybody else, any questions or comments? I just I just have to mention if you are interested, we're having a uh, an amazing program with Tanya coming on April twenty fourth. It's a uh, Facebook Facebook for beginners. If you want, uh, and and you know Tanya, she's an amazing instructor. So if you want to join, registrations are open. Thank you. Perfect. So thank you very much uh, for Tanya and. Like I said, if uh, anybody else uh, sends, you can even send those questions and we will send them to her. So now we're gonna have Susan. Um, I'm sorry. And Susan is from the, um, Susan Tan, and she's from Alarm Guard Senior Protection. And she's gonna talk a little bit about their services that they provide. Hi, I can't, un uh, there we go. All right, well, first of all, good morning, everybody. And thank, thank you again for inviting me to be part of the Seniors Fair online. And just for a little bit of history, Alarm Guard Senior Protection was created a few years ago when we saw a huge increase in a demand for personal medical peace of mind. And that was way before COVID. So before, I guess about two decades, Alarm Guard had been protecting Canada and Canadians coast to coast. And prior to personal emergency response systems, we were protecting businesses and homeowners for security systems, smart systems, and cameras. But all of us today, and the majority of us, um, except for the people who are helping me with the technology, 
<laughs> uh, most of us here are baby boomers. And it's well known that the older adult demographic or population in Canada is increasing rapidly. By the year 2030, 9.5 million people in Canada will be over the age of 65. And that will be 23% of all Canadians and the numbers are growing. The majority of those Canadians wish to keep living in their homes, an independent lifestyle and keeping their own life in their own home. The Canadian government recently created a profile of seniors in Canada. Seniors in Canada are a rapidly growing segment of the population and are living longer and healthier lives than previous generations. In 2014, over 6 million Canadians were age 65 or older, representing 15.6% of Canadians' population or Canada's population. By the year 2030, just in less than two decades, seniors will number over 9.5 million and make up 23% of Canadians. And additionally, by the year 2036, the average life expectancy at birth for women will rise to 86.2 years from the current 84.2 and 82.9 years for the current for men age 80 or over. Now, a large majority of seniors are very active later in life. 80% of seniors participate frequently, at least monthly, on social activity, hence the importance of the Bowmanville Older Adult Association, and 36% perform volunteer work and 13% participate in the workforce. Now, um, just out of curiosity, has anyone here attending the Zoom meeting, have they ever had to call 911? For my husband. How many questions did they have to ask you? Wow, um, three, four, five, probably. Mm -hmm. One of the many benefits, and I'm actually wearing like a demo one here, one of the very many benefits of wearing a full GPS personal emergency response system is that even before it's shipped out to you or here in this area, I hand deliver them and set them up. Uh, the command center, which is 24 seven, already know who you are. And because it's GPS, they know your exact longitude and latitude. And we customize the background so there was a lady who was uh, deadly allergic to sulfa. That's on her account. There was a lady who had surgery on her throat. If she ever is to be revised, there's warnings never to put anything down her throat. So we can customize all the drug allergies, food allergies, pre-existing conditions, emergency contacts, and so forth. So that when we do dispatch first responders, they know ahead of time all the personal um, pre-existing concerns and emergency contacts. And then during a medical event, because there's automatic fall detection, whether you manually press the SOS button or you fall, it's going to both engage the live two-way voice. And while someone's talking to you and reassuring you that help is on the way, other people at the command center will be contacting first responders and family members. And we can customize it that family members are alerted for just medical events only or I do strongly suggest that one family member is alerted for everything. I had a very stubborn individual in Alberta that reminded me of my own father. Uh, he fell and the live two-way came on and he said, you know, he's been on this ranch for X amount of years, doesn't need any help. But we alerted the daughter that he refused assistance and she went over to the ranch and he needed assistance. So it turned out to be a happy ending, but uh, because, some of us live in families where some parents are stubborn. You can customize it that family members can be alerted for everything. So they can't deny service when they need it the most. And then uh, how many here, if I, I'm going through this sometimes too, ever get up in the middle of the night and have to use the washroom? <laughs> and it's like that, that scammer that called the other lady at 3 a.m. That's a groggy time. So we understand that most falls happen near or around or in the bathroom. And we also get dizzy and anxious sometimes when we take a shower. So when you're in that situation, you're far from alone. A huge percentage of falls are, are in or near or within the bathroom. And I did some research and the CIHI, which is an independent non-for-profit organization that provides essential information on Canada's health system and the health of Canadians, 
seniors do account for over half of injury-related hospitalizations. And last year, seniors accounted for more than half of all injury-related hospitalizations amongst all Canadians. And unfortunately, women made up almost two thirds of seniors' hospitalizations. So our data shows that four out of five injury hospitalizations involving seniors were due to falls. Over the past three years, injury hospitalizations among seniors due to falls have increased 9% or in real terms, 8,900 people, the largest increase among hospitalization for seniors. This is why we're very passionate. Alarm guard senior protection built in fall detection can and will save your life. And the features of the device, which I'm sort of holding in my hand here, designed to help anyone during any and all emergencies. And the emergency pendant will keep you safe because it has automatic fault detection. You can reach out for help at a tap of a button by just pressing the SOS. Get expert help. It's a light and stylish design. Two-way voice communication, so the command center is talking with you. And again, it's full GPS. So you could be anywhere in Canada on vacation or on business. And it's, they know, yes, where you live, but let's say I was up at Manitoulin Island and staying in a cottage, they would know to send the first responders closer to my cottage in Manitoulin. And it is also independent. You don't have to hook it up to your landline or cell phone. And I've tested my demo device, Presqu'il, Sandbag, Spawn Echo, Kill Bear, uh, Darlington and trails up in the Kawarthas and it works even when my phone is in a so-called dead zone. And um, you also, I'm sorry to say this, but I've personally seen this and so have my colleagues. Since COVID-19, we've seen a disturbing trend and I'm getting calls out of the blue because of domestic violence or violence against healthcare workers. The COVID-19 pandemic provides a stark reminder of the importance of women and healthcare workers this isn't just for medical anymore. Um, we're finding that people have been using these panic buttons while leaving the hospital at the end of their 14 or 18 hour shift. And I've had a few cases of women right here in Durham where they're just in a parking lot and they're walking in and they're wearing a mask and an anti-masker has verbally been very aggressive to them. But also I've had women as young as in their mid thirties say that uh, they need a personal panic because their ex that they haven't seen in seven years is showing up and harassing them and, and harassing their daughters. So it's kind of heartbreaking that violence has gone up during COVID, but now I realize this isn't just for seniors, it isn't just for medical, it is a personal emergency response system for domestic violence and for healthcare workers. So if you have a family member or someone that you care about, that needs to be safe, whether they're at home or on the road, the panic and the fall detection is there and it's customized. The command center will always know your personal information as much or as little as you wish. And if your medications change, we can change that as soon as you let us know. So it's just basically peace of mind. And also um, families with Alzheimer's or dementia, there are situations where, which are called wandering or sundowning. And we also can set up a geofence, which means if they want to walk two blocks around their home every afternoon at 2.30 p.m. or three o'clock or whatever, if they wander out of that geofence, family members will be alerted. And if we just go back two months, the family in Port Hope that drove was going to drive to Montreal, it was two older people in their 90s, they got lost just in the Ottawa area. They were looking for them on the Friday and they weren't found until late Saturday afternoon, I believe. Well, if their grown children had had the geofencing, they would have been found within moments, not hours, not days. And with our climate and ever increasing people being slightly uh, angry to people who wear masks in public and so forth, it's just that peace of mind of knowing that if anything does happen, help is on the way. And um, I guess this would be the time where people might have some questions to ask and uh, ask away. <laughs> or not. <laughs> I have a comment. 
<laughs> yes, please. If you think you don't need one and you've fallen, you need one. Because I have a little yes. story. Back in the winter, when that 20 centimeter snowfall we had, I went out to my car, I went to unlock it, and it was icy under my feet. But behind me was a big snowbank. I fell backwards into the snowbank oh. and into a bush. I wasn't injured, but I lay there for 40 minutes before I could figure out how I could get up because I was like this, my feet down, I bummed down in a rut and, and the back of me in a rut. I had no, nothing to grab onto to get up. And so I had to lay there and figure out, how am I going to get up now? And of course, COVID, nobody's around. They're all in their houses. Nobody could see me. Nobody could help me get up. And the wind chill factor, hypothermia, all of that. Um, even just mm -hmm. adapting to medications. My husband had to change his medications two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And the first couple of days, he was anxious and slightly dizzy. So guess who was wearing it? <laughs> so it just to be on the safe side. Yeah, well, my kids tell me yeah. I need to get one. Well, um, I, I live here. I just lived a few minutes west of here. But um, my number's easy. It's 905-925. And then you just count backwards, 4321. And when I see people, I always wear gloves, wear a mask. I've got all the vaccinations. And I'm going to ask the owner of the company that anyone who asks or requires into one of these devices because they were on the Zoom, I'm going to ask that there's some kind of bonus or, or break so that uh, you get like a little reward. And we have, we have different plans to suit everybody's budget. And it's just the, um, I was doing Christmas decorations for Christmas and I was doing the mantelpiece. And I stepped back to see how it looked. And we have two dogs. And guess who fell backwards over a dog's toy? <laughs> and I'm lying there going, well, where's the irony in this? <laughs> but luckily, you know, the fall detection went off. And I explained my first name, my last name. And I told them the funny story about, um, no, I'm good. And my son heard me and he came and he helped me get up. But if he wasn't in the house, I would have been alone. And I came home from protecting a lovely gentleman in um, Picton one day. He needed it to recuperate from brain surgery. He's a lovely man and his daughter runs a lovely business in the Picton area. They're just a lovely family. And when I came home, we had just gotten our new puppy. We have two dogs now. He was so excited to see me. He was doing this with his paws and I had it underneath my sweater because when I'm out and about, I usually wear it under my top. And it went off and all I had to do was say first name, last name. Here's a funny story. It's a puppy. <laughs> Press the button. And uh, they just said, nope, no worries. We'll just mark it as a test. And you never get penalized for testing. Mm -hmm. So when, when I go to like Bon Echo or Presqu'ile and we're on a trail, I'll test it just to see. So if anyone asks me, did it work on such and such a trail? I'll go, yeah, it did. And it's just that... My phone may not work in, in uh, Kawartha. Um, what is it? Um, what's the one with the carvings? Uh, Petroglyphs Provincial Park. My phone won't work on some of those trails, but my device will. So that's kind of reassuring. Um, any any other questions at all? Or I I have a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, so years. Before, before COVID, of course, uh, we had a situation here at the center. Somebody fell down at the front desk. So, of course, we went there and it was super fast, the reaction of all the staff. Oh, that's the good. moment, the moment that we were phoning 911, the, the device was already on. Yes. So this device were, was faster than us. So what I'm trying to say here, it works. It works. Yeah. And by the time... The, the people were in touch with the, this member. They were, as Susan mentioned, they knew exactly who he was, where he was, and they were saying, we are getting in touch with your family. So everything I am here to say, yes, it's oh, true. Thank you, Veronica. Yes, it works. And yeah. also, I, I, I am sure Susan is going to back me on, on this one. Sometimes we think that because we live with our partner, there's going to be support. Oh, he's going to pick me up. No, my friends. Sometimes 
they don't pick you up because they don't have the strength, because they don't have the mobility, because they don't have the the the, the strength. Like yeah, they cannot do it physically, uh huh, or or sometimes mentally, right? And also think mm -hmm. about the other way. What happens if my partner is in this situation? I am I in the position to help him out? If mm -hmm. you are not, you need one or two. And um, actually, I just talked to a couple that live in Bowmanville last week. They're both falling. And one time when one assisted the other, they both had injuries. They both needed hospitalization, which just puts all the grown children and grandchildren under tremendous stress. And we just want to prevent that, that, that heartache. And no one wants a busy signal. No one wants to be put on hold. And... Um, one of the happiest moments, um, I had to call a lady from Montreal or oh no, um, somewhere else in Quebec, um, Magog or something like that. And it was actually my birthday and we were chatting and I set her all up. And then a few weeks later, she sent me a thank you. She had a stroke, but survived. And the hospital said it was because of the fast response that she's a survivor of her stroke. And I'm getting goosebumps now, but when anyone ever reaches out and lets me know that they're here today because of what they were wearing. We had another lady in Vancouver say the same thing. It happened in the middle of the night. And she lives alone. Um, it's not just a device. It's sort of like quality of life or peace of mind. And the whole office, when we hear that someone sends us a thank you, that they're, they're here with us still, uh, it's emotional because um, a lot of families across Canada during COVID have had to go through a lot and just to take away a little bit of that stress and peace of mind and both grandchildren and grown children and the adults know that you know grandma or grandpa's got back up and it takes away a lot of stress That's, uh, now how would that compare to lifeline like for somebody in a building mm -hmm. where they have lifeline and they're not out a lot well we like have we have old school, like if somebody never leaves their apartment or condo, we can go old school, but it's through the landline. And that's right, like the that's technology right. that's been around for decades. And unfortunately, landlines fail. That's right. So this is not landline, of course, no. it's GPS, right? Yeah, because it, basically in the device, sorry, it has its own SIM card, it has its own backup battery. And here's the little cradle. Now I've, I've purposely let mine die like I'll charge it on a Saturday and see what happens. And it kind of dies by Wednesday. Okay. But the cradle, you just put it in and I haven't got this plugged in, but when you put it in, there's a little red light here and the device will actually say device is charging. And family members will also, if they want, they can get alerts that they forget to charge it. Now it will go for like two or three days, but we strongly, strongly recommend when you're safely in bed at night, and this is on the bedside table, can you put it in for like an hour each night? And then when you do get up at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. to go to the washroom, <laughs> put it on. Put it on. Because um, the majority of our thank you calls are the near misses in the middle of the night. And if you put it in the cradle for a few minutes each day, it'll never run low. And... If you do forget, because who's here, who in the last two and a half years wakes up and doesn't know what day it is because of all the long counts? <laughs> <laughs> We've all been through that brain fog. Um, the reminders are good, you know, just in case, because my husband and I, we've had conversations. Is it Tuesday or Thursday? Uh, it's Friday. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so um, if you do it every night, like after you brush your teeth and you're safely in bed, and you're reading your favorite book or you're watching your favorite show on Netflix, there you go, put it in for an hour. And if you fall asleep and it stays there all night, it's not gonna damage it. So it's, it's, we strongly recommend the daily, put it in the cradle. So it is uh, it is peace of mind. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you. Susan. Can you repeat again the website that they can get more information? Oh, certainly. Um, it is, I think on the thing, it's uh, just seniorprotection.ca. But um, I'm also on Instagram on Senior Protection Mobile, and I've posted a lot of, um, I try to post articles that relate to seniors' health and stats and facts. 
So, and you can also text me at 905-925-4321. But it's, uh, but I believe, I don't have my business card in front of me, it's seniorprotection.ca. We, we do have a, a sheet of paper um, yeah. in your, your package for the OACAO uh, virtual fair. Yeah, and in the lobby here, uh, last, because I'm a member, I've got to get into some more programs and participate. I gained a lot of weight during COVID, so I need to exercise. But uh, I've also left flyers in the, where the flyers are in the lobby as well. Thank you very much again. Oh, thank you all. It's been a pleasure. And I really want to thank Kristen and Dawn because I'm a technophobe when it comes to these meetings and they've been extremely helpful. So thank you all again. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Thank you so much. And this is the, the final part for uh, our first part of the, um, of the presentation of the OACOAO Activity Living Fair, uh, or Active Living Fair, I'm sorry. Um, and we're looking forward to see you back at 1 p.m. So we are having a break for lunch and back at 1 p.m. we're gonna have um, information on what the BOA has to offer for you.